The North American Rockwell OV-10 Bronco was a twin-engined light attack aircraft conceived in the 1960s and used heavily in Vietnam by the US Navy, US Marines and US Air Force. ICM already make an amazing kit of this in 148 scale. Now they've downsized it to 172nd. Is it as good? Let's have a look inside the box of the kit, right here on Gary Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today is box opening day on the kit of the week. That kit is the OV10A Bronco in 172nd scale from ICM. Now, if you're thinking about buying one of these and want to know what's in the box, you are very much in the right place. If you've already got one, and if you have, you've got it pretty sharpish because it's actually quite new, and you want to know how to put it together, then a build video will appear towards the end of the week. And between then and now, there will be a context video where I'll have a look at the history of the OV10 Bronco, as well as a review of what other kits are available of the plane. Now, if you like any of my videos, please do remember Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you want to see when any of my content comes online, please do remember to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and you'll get notified as soon as any new videos arrive. And of course, if you'd like to offer a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or indeed by using any of my online partner programs. For full transparency, I need to tell you that this kit was provided for free as a review sample by the very nice people at ICM. However, I'm not receiving anything in money or in kind to form any particular opinion. What you see is what I actually really believe to be the case. So let's make a move on then and have a look inside the box of the OV10A Bronco in 172nd scale from ICM. So here is the box of the OV10 in 172nd scale, the Bronco. I've been looking forward to making this. Beautiful box art as ever. All of these Broncos have really cool box art on them, which really helps sell a kit, of course. Um, down here, there's difficult to read on the video perhaps, but there's a brief history of the OV10, how many parts are inside. So uh, 177 millimeters long. 170 millimeters wide, 261 parts in total. Uh, some of those, of course, are going to be optional weapons. So you're probably about 240, 250 we're actually going to use. A reprise of the four suggested schemes here on the side. And there we go, proudly made in Ukraine. Okay, so let's have a look what you get inside the box for your money. So there's a big plastic bag full of all the parts you need. There's a thing here about the ICM paints. We'll be using some of the ICM paints for this build so that's cool also cool to see what other ones are but we'll have a look at those in a bit there is this nice instruction leaflet have a look at that in a moment and of course there's the set of decals which are all very lovely we'll have a look at all these bits in more detail so this is frame a this has the fuselage area and fuselage bottom it has part you know, half of each of the um, booms here it has some rocket packs some propellers other bits and pieces bits of instrument panel out with exhausts and stuff like that frame b has the other half of both the booms the base of the cockpit area the seats fuel tanks uh, the wings and the sponsons on the side as well some control surfaces uh, some bits of wheels there's this thing along here which i'm going to guess is um 
a spa, I think from memory, some sort of spa that goes along the top. I'm kind of surprised that's on the outside of the frame because it does get knocked. That's the only really surprising thing here, but we'll have a closer look at it again in a minute. And then we have frame C. We have two of them because they're identical. There we go. So this has um, bombs, rocket packs, fuel tanks, napalm, whatever, um, engine bay components, undercarriage components, all the things that you generally get on both sides of the plane. They're all here. Frame D is the transparency section, so it's the top and sides of the main canopy, the windshield. Um, I think one of these is going to be a, a weapon site, and there's probably an ID light as well. Taking a look at the actual plastic, it's very nicely molded, uh, very crisp, very clean, nice panel lines, not too deep and not too ethereal either, so they sh should be easy enough to pick out. There's lots of rivets in there as well which is fantastic the um sorry these these little uh guides on the wing and maybe vortex generators something like that on the tailplane they all seem very nice and relatively well to scale i have to say um side of the plane these booms plenty of rivet marks there to pick out lots of detail we can play with as i say the only kind of weird thing is this which i think is a spar and it's on the outside of the frame that is just a bit bizarre to me that you would do that um but we'll see how it fits together but you know instantly you're going to think this end's going to be damaged because it's not sitting at the right height or something but we'll see what happens with that just a, a very strange piece of design. Maybe there's a reason why. The instructions sheet is, thankfully, the modern ICM way of doing things. Full color, nice glossy look to it. Um, the color callouts here are descriptors but then also now their own paint colors because of course they do their own lining paints and so all of these are their own lining paints inside we have the frame layouts which is always helpful and then the build itself now these aren't shaded much in fact they're not shaded at all but they're pretty good they're not just exploded views, they are sort of pointing things in directions and join this to this and add that and paint that this colour first and things like that. So, you know, having made the 148, I'm feeling quietly confident about it. Um, yeah, everything's looking pretty much the same, just smaller, obviously. But there's quite a lot of it. <laughs> you know, there's quite a lot to this kit um, they have mask templates here um, to be on it I'll give them a go but to be honest I've never found these all that accurate and sometimes not even the right size so not to scale but I'll see I'll see later on how they go and then the weapons options as well and plenty of options of weapons rocket pods bombs low drag bombs high drag bombs more rocket pods um napalm i think and a fuel tank and these are they sort of gives you an idea of the kind of sets of weapons that would be carried on missions for the different variants as well because there's, there's four different scheme variants and so they may have different missions and so on and so forth so they've done a bit of research there first aircraft is marine observation squadron 2 um, in vietnam this one is light attack squadron 4 val4 of the u.s navy 
Number three is the US Air Force aircraft from 20th Tactical Air Support. I think that's the box art aircraft. And finally, um, 20th Tactical Air Support later on, Da Nang in 72. Again, VAL4, black ponies, they say here. Although it then translates it into something totally different. So 55472, yeah. Ignore that one. It is the top one, the Val 4 Black Ponies aircraft, which actually looks really nice. So there we go. Four uh, sets of markings and um, all your color codes are here. It's not that difficult to find online the translations if you want to translate them to other manufacturers. The decal sheet is here um, for aircraft for the Marines and the Navy. Uh, the, these things here are the tips, propeller tips that are white, red, and white. There's the instrument decals, which is good. And then loads of stencils and stuff like that, and weapons, markings, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, they look okay. They look pretty good, actually. It's difficult, actually, on, on ICM ones, it's slightly difficult to sometimes assess the sharpness or accuracy because the backing paper, this blue backing paper has got quite a noticeable texture, um, colour texture to it, so it makes it tricky. So what we need to do is zoom in a little bit. So we go with zoomed in. Um, as you can see, it's maybe not cartograph sharp, but it's okay, especially for a 170 second scale kit. This um, pencil lead here is, is 0.5 of a millimetre, so these things here are just around half a millimetre tall. Um, you can't really read them, but you know who's going to? Anyway. The important thing is when you get to uh, things like squadron markings, they're absolutely crisp. So yeah, you know, the markings are okay. They're, they're not the best in the world they are quite away from being the worst. I think they're very functional. And for, again, 170 seconds. Unless you're in the next uh, sort of competition arena, then these are brilliantly good. These are fine. If you're in competitions, get some aftermarket. But I think these are okay. Now, the nice people at ICM also sent me a set of the paints that are designed for the OV-10. They are principally designed for the green over grey schemes, not the navy schemes, the marines schemes, so do remember that if you're going to get a set, but they will help out because some of these paints can be a bit of a pain in the backside to find ones that look reasonably good. So you've got the top of the aircraft is camouflage green, the underside of the aircraft is this warm grey, the interior, like cockpit interiors inside the wheel wells, things like that, is this blue-grey. This oily steel is used for things like bomb racks, rudder bars, and the exhausts, the jet exhausts. You can use this oily steel. Black you can use for the propellers, various bits inside the cockpit, you know, the instrument combings, things like that. Uh, and the tyres if you should want to, although I tend to use tyre black. And there's a varnish pot as well, satin varnish to fill, finish this off. I tend to, on my kits, give everything a gloss coat of varnish once it's been painted before putting decals on them. When the decals are sat, then I can do some weathering. Then I'll put on the final finish varnish and that's where this satin will come in as the finishing color okay on the back of the packet there's a, a quick reprise of what goes where as well um yeah the, these are very nice they're 12 milliliter bottles these are designed for brush painting so you you thin them almost one to one with a good quality thinners icm do their own obviously don't just use plain water because these paints, like a lot of acrylics, have got other things than just pure acrylic. And I think the only ones who do pure acrylic is Humbrol these days. So um, 
you need a thinner um, ICM, as I say, do their own. I tend to use an airbrush thinner like this one from Sprubox. It works on pretty much everything. And of course, if you are airbrushing, you really do need to have a flow improver that delays the drying of the acrylic so it doesn't clog in your airbrush. Okay, that should be everything. There we go then. Um, it's It looks very, very much like the 148th. There's a few bits of detail that have been omitted to come down the scale. There's a little bit of rivet work. I notice also a lot of the rivet work now is recessed on the 172nd, whereas it's raised on the 148th. I think on the 172nd raising them would just make them way too big. So uh, they've opted for recessing. Of course, also it's easier to um, to put weathering into it to, to highlight them if they are recessed. Generally speaking, though, it's, it's a very similar prospect to the 148th that I've already made. So I'm really looking forward to putting it together. Now, if you're looking forward to seeing me put it together, of course, there's a build video later on this week. And between the two, there will be a context video giving you the history of the OV-10 and what kits of it are also available elsewhere. If you want to see when these pop up, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, hit that bell. You'll be notified of all my future videos as they pop up. And of course, anything you like on the channel, please do remember Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. Thank you so very much for watching. Hope to see you again very soon. Take care now and goodbye.